Hi, y'all. It's Chris with Shell Fitness. Today, we're going to talk about should you count and measure your calories. Before we get into that, make sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube and tag someone who should probably think about counting their calories. So the question you need to ask yourself, do you have more of this or more of this? Americans are 80% overweight. We got a lot more of this than this. We developed this, lifting weights, large or small, proximal distal, multi-single, hitting the gym three, four, five times a week, developing more muscle. You probably won't have nearly as much of this if you're lifting weights consistently 52 plus weeks is what we suggest. Then you'll start seeing a change. But the question you gotta ask yourself again, do you have more fat or muscle? And if you have more fat, which I'm sure that you do, you need to count your calories. So here's a couple of analogies to help you help it resonate with you because I know a bunch of people are gonna get their panties and their jock straps in a bundle. That's not fair, I don't want it, blah, blah, blah. Hear me out. First analogy. Imagine if I were to say, could you cook me an apple pie? Now, if I were to cook an apple pie, I have no idea what the hell to do. I'd have to call my mom. Hey, mom, give me a recipe. she sent send me a recipe. I would bring this recipe to the store, and I would find everything on there. Go get a pan, all that stuff. I'm going to pan with a cooking pot, whatever you call it. Until I'm not very good at cooking apple pie. And then I would go, and I would start putting everything from that ingredients list into uh, mixing pop blah blah blah. Imagine if I were just to take all those ingredients and throw it into the pan and put it in the oven. It would turn out like shit. That's not how you make an apple pie. You gotta follow the recipe very specifically. It's the same with counting calories. If you have more fat on your body than you do muscle, you need to stop being ignorant and address the elephant in the room and start counting your calories. How many calories are in this banana right here? You measure it out without the peel, you're going to see it as 180 grams. That's almost 160 calories. Do you just consume the banana as is, or do you put in some peanut butter on it? Take two tablespoons of peanut butter, 210 calories. Now this harmless 100-calorie banana just turned into 300. Not that much protein, so you're still hungry. Maybe you're having some coffee. Coffee is about five calories. Nothing harmless with that. Or very, very harmless coffee. But then you put some sugar in there. You put some milk in there. You put some... Who knows what else you put in? Now that five calorie cup of coffee goes to 200. 500 calories, harmless calories, is gonna add up at the end of the year. So what you need to do is be aware for a good seven days. Get a food log, and you write out everything that you eat. I like doing it old school like this. I mean, there's my fitness pal and a lot of apps that you can track everything. It's to cause awareness. Food is not bad. Take, take that approach, whoever started it, Throw it out the window because it's horse shit. Food is fuel. When we talk with our clients here at Show Fitness, we want you to consume so when you go into the gym, you have the fuel to get a kick-ass workout. So you can set PRs. Can you, den can you do five chin-ups? Can you do 20 push-ups? Can you bench your body weight? Can you deadlift your body weight? Can you squat 1.5 times your body weight? If you can't do those things, I guarantee you're probably unhappy with your body and you have more of this than this. It's important to understand that these are pretty much the same. You're looking at five pounds of fat, five pounds of muscle, a little surface area is gonna be more here. But what happens is this is more metabolically active. You're gonna feel better, you're gonna be more confident, and you're gonna be able to eat a little bit more. So how many calories should you be consuming? You gotta go through the Harris-Bennett equation. A simple equation is taking your body weight times it by 10 for a male, nine for a female. If you're working out, give yourself a multiplier of 1.375. I'll put it into the little uh, biography thing, whatever it's called, description. So that's analogy number one. Analogy number two is imagine you had a friend who's constantly getting tickets on the freeway. And you tell them you should probably monitor your speed. They go, no, 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 I don't need to do that. Well, you're constantly getting speeding tickets. You need to be aware of how fast you're going. Now, me personally, I've never gotten a speeding ticket. So does that mean I need to constantly be looking at the speedometer? No. People are different, bodies are different, and I know there's a lot of pushback when it comes to measuring your food. I measure my food maybe once, once a month, maybe just to be aware and out of curiosity. How many calories are in a cup of milk? How many calories are in a cup of cereal? What about a cup of pasta? It's just to cause awareness and to remind me that four ounces of a chicken breast is pretty small. So if I'm trying to trim up my midsection or lose a little fat in my ass or whatever it may be, you know, you hate those little dimples in your butt, you want to get rid of them, 
you want to start measuring out your food, do it. If you've never done it before, these are like 20 bucks. Do it for a good two, three, four days. Cause awareness. Start working out. If you're not working out four times a week for a year, I'm going to tell you to start there. Once you've been doing that regularly, I'm going to tell you to start being aware of your calories. So the question again is, should you count your calories? I think the answer is yes. If you have more fat than muscle, start counting your calories. Do it for a good three, four days. Old school food log list. Make sure to follow us and like us on YouTube. Thanks for watching.